I grew up in a time when all clocks had faces. So to me, time itself was a circle. 60 seconds, 60 minutes, 12 hours. And of course, the year was a circle. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Winter again with the recurrent birds coming back in the spring, trees turning in the fall. As a woman, of course, I had monthly cycles for decades. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> And everywhere you look in nature, the seed leads to the blossom, leads back to the seed again. And I studied history in college, so I know history it goes in circles too. Conservatism and liberalism, isolationism and active engagement trade places over and over, which is kind of a comforting thought if you're able to take a long view. <laughs> Moons circle the planets, planets circle the suns, days follow the nights again and again. If you believe in Walt Disney's Lion King, we live in a circle of life. If you're a Hindu, you believe we live in a circle of life and death and then another life. But no matter, the circle is a symbol of renewal, sustainability, reciprocity. And I think it's also the perfect model for a community support system. Um, I've either started or helped start seven nonprofits here on South Whidbey to date. And while the mission has always been to fill a need, my first priority has always been um, to do it with the right attitude. Because I believe in all my heart that when you help people in a circular way, when people give when they can and receive when they need, you create a more cohesive and inclusive and wonderful community than one that's based on the model of charity. Um, now, charity, to my mind, is a very linear thing. It goes in only one direction. And it's based on a model of a good-hearted person who helps the less fortunate. But that sets up this false dichotomy. You know, then you have givers and you have receivers, and the lines don't blur much, which ends up making those who receive help feel a little ashamed, and those who think of themselves as givers having a really hard time asking for help when they really need it. For about a decade, I answered the phones for um, Hearts and Hammers and for Friends of Friends Medical Support Fund. And this was an actual issue. I mean, I can't count the number of times that people burst into tears when they were talking to me on the phone because they were givers and they just did not want to ask for help. It was just too hard. You know, they, they, they were used to being the ones who volunteered. So eventually I figured out this solution. I would say, oh, do you volunteer? And they, you know, reel off this long list of things they did. And then I'd say, well, then you're prepaid. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> oh, I forgot that good line. Darn it. <laughs> I had another circle, which is where I buy clothes of good cheer. I wear them for two seasons, and then I put them back so you can buy them. <laughs> but the whole problem with this sort of giver and receiver dichotomy is that you never know when you're going to be the one who's less fortunate when you're going to be the one who really needs help because you've gotten a bad diagnosis, or you've been in an accident, or you've developed a loss, you've lost your job, and the breath has just been knocked out of you. So, what I like about the South Whitby Safety Net is it's based on peer-to-peer -peer relationships. Most of the good organizations are based on peer-to-peer -peer relationships, where there's a circle of giving and receiving, giving as you can, taking when you need to, that works more like neighbors helping neighbors than any kind of charity, and it throws the concept of charity right out the window. Those who receive charity often have so much to offer if they're only asked. And if you give everyone a way to contribute to the community safety net in a way that at some level, either um, through their time or their talents or their money or their, their friendship or their homemade chocolate chip cookies, as an exchange of equals, then you've created this lovely circle of joy and caring and compassion that labels no one a loser and no one a winner. And that means that everyone gets to feel like they deserve the holiest, the most perfect, the ultimate of circles, the halo. <laughs>